Hi, I'm Naomi. I'm in a band called Muna, and I'm here with people at Korg to talk about how I use Korg products. When we worked on the newer song that we put out as a single, one that got away, I, after having used the Nautilus on tour, was pretty confident that, you know, I could plug some cables into it and run it through our DAW and get some great sounds out of it. And so, yeah, a lot of the sounds that I used on one that got away are just direct internal patches from, from the Nautilus. After having had it on tour for a couple months, we felt the need to dust off a song that we had been sitting on and actually take it seriously and track it and try to put it out um, before we went on the Taylor tour. So during that time in the studio, I had this sort of set up ready to play and I was comfortable with it. So started, instead of looking for soft synths on the DAW that I use, I cracked this on and started looking through. There's thousands of sounds, so it kind of felt like a waste to just not see what I could find on here. Um, and then also you're not dealing with any latency um, when you're playing, so you can be a very expressive. To be honest, like at least half of the synth sounds on One That Got Away are from here. Um, a lot of saws and pad work that exists throughout the song, but the primary like key part is, a, is, is the Vogue M1 um, keys that I love so much and were just absolutely perfect for the tone of the song. I was so happy with them. And then, yeah, that kind of thrillery lead at the end that I was also really excited about. Very like, sussy. If you know me, you know what I like and it's very much uh, suspended to in the right hand. <laughs> That's a very typical sort of Naomi key part. There's some truly stunning bass sounds in here and I can't uh, emulate exactly what I did because I, I think I sampled these parts and then arpeggiated them and then sort of blended them with some soft synths, but I used two of them on one that got away. This one's called Classic Punch Bass, and yeah, I was just playing around and, I was, and the low end is pretty brutal. Yeah, so I, I, I took some kind of like quick little samples of that and programmed it um, to match some soft synth bass and I use this too. I like that mouthy kind of. Yeah, really, really loved playing around with those. I, I think that bass in the song, the synth bass is like quadruple tracked and then there's a live bass on top of it. I would just play the track of the song over and over again, pick a patch, play what I felt over it, and then try from there to kind of comb through and see if I had actually played anything good. Um, and I did that with some bass sounds as well. So a good three of those sounds are samples that I took and played and then kind of like arranged into, into the arpeggiated part that exists in the song today. I'm assuming this, one, this patch is named after the band, but it's called Cars Lead. Um, so yeah, instantly kind of gravitated towards that. I think I was just truly looping the song, trying to figure out like what else it might need. And I just played over it over and over and over again with a bunch of different patches. And then I found some like good stuff that I had played and cut it down into this part, which happens in the, in the second verse, um, second verse and second pre. It, that just like, it's very tucked down, but you'll, you'll hear it um, leading into the, into the little break before the second, second course, yeah. Um, this was a, a, a more kind of long decay, long sustained pad that I shortened because I, I liked the, the top end. Um, it's called Evermore. So a little, a little Taylor Swift Easter egg up <laughs> there everywhere you look. If you love, you know, like, 80s funk and pop music, you'll probably 
uh, be familiar with like how consistently used the fifths hits are. So like a, a kind of stringy little like use that on the track. Um, normally I would go through some soft synths that I have to find that, but yeah, I, I, this, I just straight up tracked all over the song and I play it live. So this came in super handy. This one is my, this one's my favorite and hopefully other people's favorite too. This is called Thriller Chords. That's the name of the patch. And when we were, when we were tracking, we knew we wanted to do a kind of like slappy bass thing at the end of the song, like a little instrumental section. And Joe played a guitar part sort of by accident. And I was just like, wait, keep tracking that. And she continued playing it. We tracked it and then I was like, oh, I know exactly what needs to go over this. And it was a very sort of like delightfully abrasive uh, synth towards the end of the song, which I'm sure, yeah, if you know the song, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, it, it's this part. <laughs> That's how the song ends. And yeah, I was having a bit too much fun uh, playing that. And I love to play it live. And yeah, I think our production manager also will mimic me playing it live. That's, that's a little, little something to look out for if you're, if you're at a show. So yeah, feel free to play along if you like that sound. I think after a certain point of working with soft sense, your brain kind of just <laughs> smooths over and it's like, it's hard to get quickly inspired when you're looking for something to just like satisfy the need to put a part down. And so it's nice to throw a new toy into the mix um, to kind of like get the gears turning in your head. And I definitely was very inspired using this for that song. And I hope to use it more in the future. We've been hitting the pavement pretty hard for the past 10 years and for the past like eight years touring wise. You just get filled with such a profound amount of gratitude, like when things actually start, you know, working as, as they say. So it's definitely wild to like be the same band that you were playing a lot of the same songs that have taken you all over the world. Honestly, the best that I can do is just try to like go on stage and give the exact same show every time, regardless of what environment we're playing in, we're playing the exact same show. We're giving it 150,000% in front of Taylor Swift's audience for a 35 minute set and in front of our audience for us, you know, an 80, 90 minute set. No matter what venue size we're playing, we're, we're bringing the exact same amount of energy. And I hope that that's what has gotten us where we are now. I, I have a feeling that it is, um, but yeah, I think that commitment to just like honoring our craft and respecting the audience, no matter where we're playing, has gotten us to where we are now. And yeah, it just like, you can't help but feel stunned and so grateful and just, you know, excited about making music, excited about going back and like taking time off the road and being able to do it all again.